What is your greatest parenting challenge? If your children's behavior and their problems have you feeling overwhelmed, by far the best thing you can do to improve your child's behavior is Hi everyone, this is me Jyotika Pedi, founder of Happiness is Love. We make relationships better. So we are talking about how Positive marriage equals positive parenting equals positive family. Because happiness and well-being is impossible without positivity. So I'm here sharing with you my toolbox. All the learnings, the epiphanies, the awakenings one has had and is work and learn. We are all work and learn. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about positive parenting tips. In our earlier video, we spoke more on positive marriage tips because parenting really begins with your marriage and now I am excited to share with you positive parenting tips. If your children's behavior and their problems have you feeling overwhelmed and you sometimes feel helpless, don't worry, we've got you covered. I have three kids of my own so I get you. Sometimes when tasks and schedules get overwhelming, it's helpful to make a to-do list to make things feel more manageable and focused. And this is something that I do and it's a practice that really helps me. So I want you to stop and pause and just ask yourself a few important questions. Number one, what is your greatest parenting challenge? Number two, what are you doing about it? Number three, is your method working? Number four, do you think all parents need help at some point? Well, I would like to answer for myself, even though I'm in the business of raising families, I have a mentor too. I seek coaching and counseling regularly because I need help too, because we're all work and learn and life is all about learning. Life never stops teaching us and we are all lifelong learners. So let's start with some simple, practical, fun tips for your better behavior and things that I apply on my everyday basis in my life. Number one, invest in one-on-one -on -one time with your children. This is non-negotiable. By far, the best thing you can do to improve your child's behavior is spending time with them individually every single day because each child is different. Each child's needs are different and different. And it's very important. I have three and it is very important to give each one positive attention and emotional connection that they really need from us parents. When they don't have that positive attention, they will seek out attention in negative ways and consequences and other disciplinary methods will not work. All you need to do is aim for just 10 to 15 minutes a day per child and you will see measurable improvement guaranteed because this will help fuel each child's love tank and they will feel the love. Number two, please get serious about sleep because sleep is help. And with working with so many teenagers and young adults have realized one biggest challenge for Gen Z and millennials is really their inability to set healthy routines. I see that people's sleep cycles are completely messed up and this is causing a negative impact on their health, their happiness, and their well-being. Think of how you feel when you're overtired. Cranky, aren't you? I am, I become hangry. Irritable when you're hungry, your head and stomach hurts. It's the same for kids. And most toddlers up to teens get far less sleep than their growing bodies really need. Teens even need more sleep than younger kids. I have a 17 year old and when I consult my physician, he always asks me, make sure that your kids are getting ample sleep. If your child has a sleep deficit, try to move up bedtime 10 minutes early every night. A well-rested kid is a well-rested or behaved kid and can function better throughout the day and in school. Focus on routines. This is so important. Kids thrive with the routine. So set clearly defined routines for the most challenging times of the day, like mornings, after school, meal times, and bedtimes are the most important. And if you take care of these times, you will be successful in raising happy, healthy, self-motivated, and responsible kids. Let your kids help decide how the routine will go. Do we get dressed or brush teeth first? 
How can you help me get dinner ready? Your younger kids, write out the order of the routine using pictures or words and let them decorate it and make it fun. Hang it somewhere in the kitchen and then make sure that you stick with it so that your children understand the importance of routine because this gives them a sense of predictability and stability. Number four, let everyone pitch in. For better behavior, kids need to understand that everyone needs to contribute to the well-being of the house. Everyone has a role to play in the smooth functioning of the house. So make sure that you get your delegation hat on. All kids from toddlers to teens should have family contributions, not chores that they do daily. This helps bring your family closer, teaches them positive life skills and works to prevent the entitlement epidemic that we all witness sometimes. Number five, encourage your kids to be problem solvers. Time to reiterate your referee whistle. When parents step in the middle of a sibling disagreement and determine who's at fault and then work towards punishment, it actually makes things worse. To kids, they see a winner and a loser and a need to escalate the sibling rivalry. There's a beautiful book, I believe, which is called Sibling Without Rivalry. I would encourage you to read it. Encourage your kids to find a resolution to the problem on their own, which will help them solve conflicts later in life. If you have to get involved, don't choose sides. Rather, ask questions that will help them figure out a solution that all parties can feel heard and feel good in the end. Number six, simplify family rules and just be firm and stick with them. It can be difficult for kids to keep a mess of rules straight. If it seems like you have 50 or, or 60 family rules, whistle down the list to what is most important. Determine a consequence for each rule. Make it clear to the kids ahead of time of both the rules and the consequences and don't give in. Next, spend timeouts to the sidelines. Send timeouts. Practically every parent has tried to punish or correct behavior by sending their child to timeout but most have found it just doesn't work or lead to bad behavior. That's because a timeout in the corner or bedroom doesn't teach kids how to make better choices the next time. And generally a timeout just escalates a power struggle. Kids, especially the strong will ones, will push back and hard. Instead, focus on training and not punishment. Ask, what can you do differently next time? And role play this and make it fun. Next, just say no to saying no. Kids barrage us with questions every day. I have three, so I get it. More often than not, our answer is no and kids resent it. Find opportunity to say yes when you can. If your daughter asks to go in the indoor pool in the middle of a busy weekday, try saying, going to the pool sounds like so much fun, Amana. Should we go tomorrow after school or on Saturday? Of course, there will always be things that will need a big no, but try to redirect them to a more positive option. So make sure that you know your nose. Next, don't worry, be happy is something we all know. Be the example you want your kids to see. Think about how your kid might describe you to their friends. Would they say you're fun and funny and lighthearted or stressed out and bossy? Try changing your energy by simply smiling more. Believe me, it works like magic. Children mirror us. We are their models. We want to raise happy kids. Question is, am I smiling? Am I happy? Or am I stressed? Because this is the energy that we download onto our children. It will help you be calmer in times of stress and your kids will notice and they will learn this behavior and they will model this positivity. Don't ignore the source of misbehavior. Misbehavior is always a symptom of something deeper, deeper. And when we can find what causes it, we can use the right strategy to correct it. If Amana keeps dumping toys all over her desk, she's upset that you've been working all afternoon. If the other one is throwing a fit over having the blue plate because he really wanted to make a choice and feel independent, 
in the middle of this misbehavior, you need to stay calm and ask yourself what might be causing it. And this is very, very useful for you to check in with yourself and ask these pertinent questions and make sure that you remind yourself of the little wins. And I work with a lot of parents who have a lot of self-doubt and they wonder, am I doing enough? The fact that you are trying your best is good enough. The fact that you're seeing this video means you're invested in your parenting growth and evolution. It's, a, it's proof that you really care because you are taking time to learn, to grow and share. My final thoughts are cut through the chaos by just following these simple tips and you'll start seeing better behavior from your kids and you can create a happier and more peaceful home. We at Happiness is Love are here for you. We curate these videos because we really care. We're all work and learn. We believe that together we are building ourselves, each other and a better tomorrow. Until then, keep smiling, keep shining, keep inspiring.